What the heck even causes borderline personality disorder? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution and welcome back to another video about borderline personality disorder. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the three leading causes of why people get BPD in the first place. So please do me a favor and share this video because I can't stress enough. A lot of people are walking around with this personality disorder and they don't even realize it, but they were at a huge risk based on these causes. So by sharing this video, they might realize like, oh wow, maybe this is why I'm acting or responding the way that I do to things. And if you're somebody with BPD, this might give you some answers too. And if you share this video, it might explain to other people how you got it in the first place. Like I was debating on what type of video to do tonight. I might do this video later in the week, but there's a huge stigma about BPD. And I think if people understand the actual causes of BPD, they'll start to empathize a little bit more and maybe cut you a little slack. Now, just to make it clear real quick, I am never of the belief that you should use your mental illness as an excuse to be a jerk to people. Like I mentioned in my Kanye West video, I'll link it up in the info card. Like if you do have BPD, that doesn't mean that you're allowed to just run around all willy nilly. Like you need to seek treatment and I will provide information on that below. All right, but anyways, let's get into the three leading causes of borderline personality disorder. All right, so reason number one, family history, okay? Now, now, I am pulling this information from the National Institute of Health, and to me, um, reason number one and reason number three kind of tie in together, but anyways, let's talk about it. Reason number one is family history. So if there is a history of borderline personality disorder in your family, your chances of having BPD are extremely high. Now, this is more often the case if your caregiver has symptoms of borderline personality disorder. Like in so many cases of mental illness, they are more nurture over nature, okay? Like if you are being raised by a mother who has symptoms of borderline personality disorder, her emotions are all over the place, uh, she's emotionally neglecting you or she's being very overbearing and this can switch from one day to the next. She might say you are her favorite child one day and the next day she says she wishes that you were never born. These are all things that can develop symptoms of BPD in a child. That's why you will see generations of BPD going from one person to the next. Because you gotta understand, when we are children, when we're young, our parents, our caregivers are the primary people we're looking to to learn how to cope and deal with life. So when we see that a person's emotions are all over the place and they're very impulsive and you know bouncing from one relationship to the next and all the other symptoms of BPD, our brain starts to start rewiring and we start to think that that is the way that we're supposed to manage our lives too. All right, cause number two, genetics. What? Yes, there is a genetic component to borderline personality disorder. Now, when it comes to the genetic component, what they have found is that the genetic component has to do with really two factors, um, impulsivity as well as emotional regulation. So some of you who have been around my channel for a while have heard me talk about the prefrontal cortex. So it's possible that based on your genetic predisposition, your prefrontal cortex hasn't developed in a way to properly regulate your emotions or manage your impulses. So this is how some people develop BPD even though nobody in their environment had these symptoms. So cause number three, according to the National Institute of Health, says environmental, cultural, and social factors. Many people with borderline personality disorder report experiencing traumatic life events such as abuse, abandonment, or adversity during childhood. Others may have been exposed to unstable, invalidating relationships and hostile conflicts. So like, man, this is one of the reasons why it's so important to empathize with people with BPD. Like I work at a drug and alcohol rehab center where we specialize in mental illness as well. And from my personal experience, 90% or more of the clients we have with Borderline, they had this as their cause. They had addicted parents, they had neglectful parents, they were physically or sexually abused as a child. Like, this is what breaks my heart when there's such a stigma about BPD because so many of these people, they just developed that way based on their crappy childhood. And like, 
There's this idea that there's so much we can control in our life, but we cannot control our childhood. Who we are raised by, where we where we live, like this is not our choice. And this is a really big cause of borderline personality disorder. So like I said, this kind of relates to cause number one. But if you are raised in a house where your parents neglect you emotionally, they're not there for you, you, you don't know how to regulate these things because a parent's job is to help guide you through these emotions. If you have been abused as a child, like, it is very hard to maintain any type of relationships because as soon as you bring somebody close, you might be worried that they hurt you because a lot of people with BPD, they might've been sexually abused by a very close family member. And that's why that splitting or black and white thinking, which I talked about in my other video, often occurs because it's very hard to identify is this person good or bad like for example if a if a young boy or a young girl was molested by their father right like this father might be taking care of them and paying the bills and buying them things but on the other hand they're abusing them you see what i'm saying so they know good version and bad version and what happens is that they develop this in their mind and all people start flip-flopping through these categories you know what i mean so anyways those are the three causes of borderline personality disorder and i do have some more videos coming out this week about this but if you have any suggestions or questions that you have about borderline that you would like me to do a video on i don't have them planned out yet go ahead and leave them down in the comments below because i am here to serve you you beautiful subscribers out there all right but anyways again share this video help people understand how bpd actually develops all right but if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you are new here i'm always making videos to help you out with your mental health go ahead and click that little round subscribe button and if you if you want to check out some other videos on my channel you can click or tap on one of those thumbnails all right so thank you so so much for watching have a little empathy today and i'll see you next time